each topic but today but today's topic is just the introduction of facial aesthetics how you can incorporate in your uh, practices and what aspects of the facial aesthetics you have to see during the consultation process procedures it's not necessary that every time you consult a patient and every time the patient will say yes okay I, you have given me a good consultation just start with the botox just start with the fillers it never goes like that you just have to keep on consulting one day the patient will come himself herself uh, herself that yes doctor once you had told me during my teeth scaling or during my root canal treatment that i need such such treatments so can you just throw a light a little bit more light upon uh, the procedures which you have already told me so the consultation is very important even if you have not started your practice with the facial aesthetics just keep on consulting so that when you are when you become a master for the procedures when you go and have a training and then you come back so that you have a ready clientele with you who is ready to get the treatments from you so that is uh, we are going to discuss how we have to do the consultation and what all important features we have to see and whatever questions you have please keep, you can raise your hand either you can write in the chat or you can even ask so we we don't want to make it a boring session so what are the learning objectives today by the end of this section you will be able to understand why facial aesthetics with dentistry and what are the uh, what are the factors that influence the facial aesthetics of a person such as the skin texture the facial asymmetries or facial symmetries and facial proportions the importance of the facial features for the emotional attributes of the a person like how some features they lead to the tiredness of the face they lead to the sagginess of the face and how you can correct them so you will also understand how to define the facial symmetry and its contribution to the beauty and attractiveness and that all the symmetry is often considered to signify beauty but in reality perfect symmetry rarely occurs and is not desirable and what do patients want from their facial aesthetic treatment so regardless of the nationality age ethnic background for the most part people universally share a sense of what is attractive and those attractive features we will bring together in our webinar to know what are the attractive features and how us being dentists we can contribute to the uh, attractiveness of a particular face so why aesthetics with dentistry and my answer is if not us who because we are the smile makeover experts we know the proper proportions of the teeth to the lips we know the proper proportions of the lips to the surrounding soft tissue structures we know the golden proportions then we have more training and knowledge of the oral and the orofacial area than any other healthcare professionals we read what is the musculature what is the physiology what is the anatomy what is the blood supply of the various uh, structures of the face plus we have the basic knowledge of the facial musculature and the golden proportions we know the golden proportion exists in the teeth also the ratio of the central incisor to the ratio of the lateral incisor is in the golden proportion that is 1.6 to 1 and similar golden proportion also exists in our faces if you see the width of the face any face any attractive face and the length of any attractive face that ratio also again falls in the ratio of the golden proportion that is 1.6 to 1 then if you see the ratio of the uh, width of an eye the width of an eye uh, the this width of an eye is equal to the width of the nose and also uh, we'll come to the various golden proportions in our coming slides and being dentist we already have an existing patient pool with us we just have to convert our dental patients into our cosmetic patients or the aesthetic patients plus we can provide the quick and the convenient treatments during our routine dental visits like if a patient has come for the root canal treatment or the scaling procedure in the same sitting we can provide these procedures like the botox like the fillers or the any other aesthetic procedures which are non downtime procedures which are also known as lunch time procedures because the patient will come and get the uh, treatment done and will can go back to the offices without letting anyone know that something has been done on the faces so what do patients want from their facial aesthetic treatment 
they want to bring out the natural beauty and attractiveness of their face they want to upgrade their appearance and they want to maintain an attractive appearance as they age and what do patients fear from their facial aesthetic treatments that is more important it's more than what they want is uh, more important is what they fear like they don't want any kind of frozen appearance they don't want a kind of appearance as a uh, few celebrities who, whose treatments have gone wrong i don't want to name them but i can't restrict also myself one is rakhi savant you all know then they are fear they are they are fearful about the expressionless face that cannot show emotion that is the frozen faces they are fearful about the side effects like the pain they will have or the downtime so we have to tell all these things during our consultation also that these are no downtime procedures they are lunch time procedures and instead of the word pain you can say they 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 might cause a little discomfort don't call it a pain they, you can call it as pain and uh, discomfort and if a patients will say you that if these treatments are temporary why should i go uh, for them you can always tell them man these treatments are not temporary rather they are long lasting so there this is just a few replay of the words which you have to do during your consultation procedures then what are the faces of the natural beauty and uh, other things which make them universally recognized the main features are the facial proportions and the contour of the face the facial asymmetry and the facial symmetry and the facial skin quality so patients may focus on specific problem areas only like if a patient has come to you a young female of around 35 to 40 years she has come to you for the smile design so if you are telling her you have consulted her for the smile designing procedure you have consulted for the direct veneers indirect veneers crowns uh, braces whatever you, all you have told her about but if she has got deep nasolabial folds or if she has got saggy appearance of the skin or unhappy face due to the marionette lines appearing so doing your part will not give her as good appearance of the smile as if you also give her the nasolabial uh, fold correction or the marionette correction or the lifting of the cheek so all these features also enhance to your smile designing but the patients are unaware that the combination treatment can give them a much more beneficial much more lifted smile than instead of getting the veneers or the braces alone so it's you who has to give the consultation that yes ma'am or sir along with these smile designing procedures you can enhance your smile by various facial aesthetic procedures about which i am going to tell so patients may be unaware of the benefits of the combination treatments if you have to tell them about this combination treatments then the discrepancies in the appearance and the signs of aging there are various signs of aging which are present on the face which the patient even doesn't know which the patient doesn't know that these features are making him or her look tired look saggy so it is you who have to tell him during the consultation yes ma'am we can correct these things also so what are the various surgical non surgical facial rejuvenations it's the basically four r principles first is relaxing the facial muscles with the botox wherever you see the dynamic lines of the patient like the lines which come on raising the eyebrows or the lines which come on browning or the lines which come on smile it can be corrected with the botulinum toxin treatment and the uh, restoring the facial volume with the synthetic fillers that is the dynamic lines are treated with the botox but the static lines that is the lines which appear when the patient is just sitting not talking not giving any expressions they can be treated with the fillers like these nasolabial lines the tear trough the marionette lines all these lines which have become static either due to aging or due to uh, due to various uh, expressions which have become static they can be corrected with your fillers and then we have other therapies like the rejuvenation of the skin with the therapies like platelet rich plasma or the mesotherapy platelet rich plasma is a is an excellent technique which is your natural technique made from your own blood uh, being dentist most of us are you doing implants and in most of the cases of the implants we are using platelet rich fibrin 
to stabilize the bone graft or to accentuate the healing during the implants or during the various dental procedures so platelet rich plasma is full of platelets and plates platelets are full of the growth factors whenever there is an injury on our body platelets are the first cells which rush on to that area they will break down they will release the growth factors and they will release a cascade of healing factors which will accentuate the healing at that point and similarly that principle of the prt has been utilized in the aesthetic dentistry for uh, in the aesthetic facial aesthetics to rejuvenate the skin to rejuvenate the hair and to accentuate the hair growth and similarly mesotherapy is a kind of drug delivery it is a kind of local drug delivery in which your some products some cocktails some ready made cocktails are injected or delivered onto the faces with the help of certain appliances like insulin syringe or the you can say any uh, gun kind of disease uh, 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 this thing appliance or a derma roller or you have derma pen lots of devices with which you can give a local drug delivery to your patient's faces and the skins and then we have redrapping your sagging facial tissues with the thread lift so thread lift again is a latest technique with which you can just drape the sagging skin of the patients with the thread lift that there are two kinds of threads one are the mono threads one are the cog threads mono threads are inserted in a free floating ma manner that is they are just inserted onto the skin and they cause the lifting of the skin because the thread itself acts as a stimulus which will initiate an inflammatory response and that will stimulate the fibroblasts and that will help in the production of collagen and that will help in clearing and rejuvenating of the skin and the cork thread because they have barbs on them they have they have a velcro kind of appearance and they cause the lifting of your sagging tissues <clears throat> i hope i'm uh, audible dr sudeep is my voice audible yes yes ma'am completely okay absolutely okay ma okay right right so anybody who has any questions you can please write up in the chats or you can just stop me also i'll be more than happy to listen to you all of you so then apart from these procedures that is the botox the fillers that is the uh, then the threads and the prt and the mesotherapy we have another beautiful procedure that is the micropigmentation with the micropigmentation or the microblading using fine tools we can enhance the eyebrows of a patient completely we can give a complete makeover to the patient by enhancing their beautiful uh, uh, giving them a beautiful eyebrows uh, which appears exactly like your own uh, own eyebrows some patients with age they start losing the hair uh, on the scalp or even the eyebrows and this losing of the hair on the eyebrows give a uh, believe me it gives a complete trauma to the patient mentally so they want to spend any any amount to get the eyebrows back so this is an excellent way to give the eyebrows back to any client using the microblading or the micropigmentation a permanent makeup technique there are two techniques actually one is microblading which is done manually with a blade and then there is permanent makeup done with the machines in which you give powder kind of things powder kind of brows to your patients uh, so both the both the techniques are good and both should be learned equally so micropigmentation also known as the cosmetic camouflage or sometimes permanent makeup it is the process of uniform implantation of minute inert pigment granules into the dermis the same technique can be used to accentuate the lip color of your clients those who have got smoky lips or those who are not happy with the uh, color of their lips they can get the color redone by you or those who do not like the pout of the uh, patient uh, lips like who, who have got thin lips you can give them a pout by giving them the fillers then we have a systemic systematic full assessment of the patient which will identify the most imp important aesthetic issues and this also encourages the patients not to focus on one pre identified problem area like if a patient has come to you for the smile designing and at the same time the patient knows that you are also into facial aesthetics then the patient will come and tell you doctor i want to get rid of these nasolabial lines or these lines which are running from the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth so the patient has just one uh, problem 
problem area that his or her nasolabial folds are deep. But it is you who have to tell him that, ma'am or sir, instead of treating these areas, we will focus more on this area that is the cheek augmentation. So when we are going to treat the cheek augmentation, your nasolabial folds will automatically improve and your facial appearance will automatically improve because the cheek augmentation is going to give you a lift like this. It's going to leave you more lifted and triangular appearance like this. In the females, the triangular faces are more acceptable and in the males, we have squarish faces and in the squarish faces, we have to work on the jaws. The males usually have the squarish faces, but the females they want this triangular face. So the patient is just telling you about one problematic area, but you have to tell them, ma'am, this, even the teardrop which is present on your face is giving you a saggy appearance or the tired appearance. So in, instead of just focusing on this area, I would rather con tell you that you want to get, you have to get the treatment of this area and this area also. Rest is your choice, whether you want the treatment of this area only or this also. So assessing the full face will enhance your consultation and the patient's experience. So facial assessment, face can be divided into equal one thirds, that is the upper third of the face, the lower third, middle third of the face and the lower third of the face, they all are divided into equal thirds, that is the upper one third from the tracheon or the hairline to the nasofrontal angle and then from the nasofrontal angle to the subnasal and then from the subnasal, that is the base of the nose to the menton, that is the chin. So these three should be equal in proportion. But with age, what happens is our lower third of the face, being dentist, we all know that the lower third of the face, because of the loss of the vertical dimension of the teeth, our lower third of the face also decreases. So we have to work in collaboration. If the patient has lost the uh, lower third of the face, you can always increase the vertical third of the face, lower third of the face by giving uh, the full, full smile, full occlusion, full mouth rehabilitation. And if still those features are there, then you can enhance the patient's features with your facial aesthetic procedures. So coming to uh, individual, these parts, um, first of all, the upper third of the face, the forehead should be slightly convex. And there should be slight convex curve from below, whereas the temporal area is slightly concave or flat in nature. And assessment of these curves is essential in the beauty of the upper face. Then assess the forehead, the glabular lines, the horizontal forehead lines, then for assessing these lines, you have to ask the patient to make certain movements like ask the patient to frown, ask the patient to raise the eyebrows, ask the patient to sniff. So all uh, when you ask the patient to make certain movements, then only you will be able to appreciate the dynamic lines and those lines will be treated by the botulinum treatment. Then we have to assess the eyebrow position. The shape and symmetry is a must, whether the eyebrow is symmetrical or not, whether the eyebrow is fuller or not. If it is not fuller, you can advise for the micropigmentation. And if the symmetry is not there, then you can treat the symmetry either with the fillers or with the botulinum toxin treatment. So there are various treatments also which, are, uh, which you can give offer to the patient. Then the eyebrows, assess the natural shape of the brow, note the asymmetries, rule out the ptosis of the upper lid or the brow. Then the usual shape of the eyebrow in the female is usually arched. The females usually love to have an arched eyebrow. And in the females, the brow should be at or above the orbital rim. And in the males, the, there is horizontal eyebrow and the brow should be at or below the orbital rim. So this is the kind of the lift we can give to the females. That is, uh, I think you can appreciate the male, uh, the uh, female, this female had a horizontal eyebrow. So we have just given a uh, Botox treatment. And with that, we have just raised the eyebrow, giving her a beautiful lift. So in the middle third of the face, we have the eyes, the crow's feet, the tear troughs, the cheeks, the nose, and the smile dynamics. The tear trough is a natural depression that grows more visible with age and the mid-face ptosis causes a thinning of the skin around the tear trough. Other clinically recognized aging changes are the, of the lower lid include the orbital fat prolapse and the loss of the skin elasticity. So tear trough is a major area, major um, concern area, which gives you a very tired appearance. And once we treat the tear, tear trough area, this just enhances the, um, the features of your patients. Then in the cheeks, 
we know that the medial cheek, the malar and the submalar volume should be there. We should have a prominence, a projection uh, on the uh, this area, which is lateral to the outer canthus of the eye. And we should have, we should know about the position of the malar and the submalar fat pads. I'll show you in the in my coming slides. Then we should also look for the nasojugal groove, which is an extension of the tear trough. Then we also have to see the OG curve, which is the free flowing curve of the uh, youth. I'll show you in my next slide, the hinterlines also. So the OG curve is a small S-shaped curve, which is which you can appreciate here. This is the S-shaped curve. It is it consists of a concave arc flowing into a convex arc, creating an S-shaped curve. So this curve, which should be there, this gives an attractive appearance to your patients. And we should strive to get this OG curve back onto the faces. Plus the aim of the cheek enhancement is to restore and create a OG curve and subtly define the zenith of the malar prominence. That is this prominence, the malar prominence should be lateral to the outer canthus of the eye and it should be above your zygomatic bone. This you can accentuate by giving a few shots of the filler injections. Then there is a hinder model. The hinder model shows two lines, one line from your ella uh, to the tragus of the ear. One line you can draw like this and another line is from the outer canthus of the eye to the outer canthus of the mouth. So these two lines, if you draw on the patient's face, this upper third, the upper third of the face, which has been shown, the upper cross, that is a very safe area for the injection of the fillers because there is less of blood vessels, less of arterial supply in this area, which makes this area so safe zone for the injection of the Botox and the fillers and the other injectables. So this, this, um, this area can provide a beautiful malar prominence or a zygomatic prominence, which will enhance and lift the faces of your patients. So you can, I think, appreciate in this how, how beautifully we have lifted her face and given her a malar prominence. Then the nose projection and the shape should be examined. The straight dorsum of the nose uh, should be acceptable. And uh, nose is one area which is very dangerous zone. So nose should be the last treatment in your facial aesthetics because this nose area has a lot of vasculature, a lot of anastomosis of the retinal artery, the angular artery, the facial artery. So while treating the nose area, this, treat, this, this area should be treated at last when you have got confidence over all other procedures. Then this patient has come to us for the correction of the nasolabial folds. So just by giving one ml of the filler, we have corrected her nasolabial folds. Then coming to the lower one third of the face, you have to see the ratio of the upper and the lower third of the uh, upper and the lower lips, the oral commissures and the perioral area, uh, chin shape, the marionette lines, we are coming to them one by one. So you can see in this, uh, the younger the face, the con more concave the uh, this thing the the tissue the area from the lower base of the nose to the lip because with age our lip tends to become convex so we have to maintain that concavity in our patient the patient's faces and there should be beautiful projection of the chin so in this patient i have done the uh, lip work where i have accentuated the concavity of the patient i have even raised the given volume to the cheek then given volume to the chin, the chin has been augmented and uh, you can see the beautiful pout, which is slight pout, which is coming in the lip. So coming to the lips again, the upper and the lower lip volume should be 1 is to 1.6. That is the golden proportion. Though most of the patients and most of the doctors also think that the upper lip should be bigger than the lower lip, but rather it is opposite. The upper lip is always 1 then the lower lip is always 1.6 in volume. But in projection, in the side profile projection, the upper lip should always be ahead of the lower lip by 1 to 2 mm. And if it is not the if the upper lip is not in front of the lower lip, then we can always enhance the facial features by giving a few uh, uh, ml of uh, injection of the filler in this area in the piriform aperture, which will automatically bring the lip outwards. 
then cupid's bow should be sharp and well defined this m shape appearance of the lips the cupid's bow which is known as it should be sharp and well defined and the upper lip should project 1 to 2 mm anterior to the lower lip so coming to the chin projection and the marionette lines the chin plays a major role in facial beauty harmony and balance aging changes result in the resorption of the mandibular and the maxillary bone forward rotation and protrusion of the chin being dentist we all are aware of this and gravitational changes also result in the sagging skin and the jowls so with age our inversion of beauty occurs because this cheek projection that tends to come down because of the loss of the fat pads so these fat pads they tend to come down and with age our muscular hypertrophy starts appearing that is the masseter muscle that tends to hypertrophy either due to pathological clenching or due to repeated bruxism or due to various dental diseases due to which we tend to do like this and also it might be because of the tmj that are masseter muscle hypertrophies and when the masseter muscle hypertrophies this gives to the accentuation of the lower third of the face in ideal faces in females the uh, bizygomatic width should always be more than the width of the lower third of the face but in some cases due to the masseteric hypertrophy and due to the volume loss in the middle third this beauty of the triangle of beauty that tends to invert so this is what happens with age and we aim to get back that tri triangle by injection of fat or the fillers into this area and by reducing the masseter mass with the help of the botulinum toxin injection so we have to uh, work together in a four r principle that is the relaxing and the rejuvenating and the, uh, the filling of the areas where there is less of the fat or less of the tissue so this is another example of the masseter hypertrophy where we have treated the lower third of the face and given it a well defined jawline so then being dentist we get so many patients of the gummy smile so the gummy smile for the correction of the gummy smile we always have studied that the botulinum toxin helps in the correction of the gummy smiles but every patient of gummy smile is not a patient of the botox injection or the botulinum toxin injection you have to rule out the cause of the gummy smile if the gummy smile is because of the short upper lip because many patients will come to you who have short upper lip and they will tell you of the gummy smile in those cases you cannot give botox injection because if uh, if the gummy smile is due to short upper lip how is botox going to help with the correction of the gummy smile and if the patient is com coming to you of the gummy smile uh, and if you have du during the consultation you have seen that the gummy smile is because of the vertical uh, maxillary excess then again he or she is not a candidate for the botox then you have to see the third cause that is the correction of the uh, gummy smile can be done if the gummy smile is due to the hyperactive muscles of the uh, face because um uh, how how will you come to know that this uh, gummy smile is because of the hyperactive muscles <clears throat> when the patient is coming to you and patient is sitting in front of you and the patient is not smiling and if you see the gummy smile without smiling then the reason is not of the hyperactive muscles then the reason would be your short upper lip or the vertically maxillary excess but if the patient is sitting in front of you and is not having the gummy smile at the moment she or he smiles you see a lot of gummy smile that means that that a uh, gummy smile is due to the hyperactive muscles and that can be easily corrected by a few shots of botulinum toxin injections then coming to the symmetry it is not always necessary to adjust or correct the facial symmetry because facial symmetry if the patient is completely symmetrical the patient will not look good the patient will look artificial kind of thing and if it is slightly asymmetrical that will give a more natural appearance so we do not aim to bring the completely symmetrical faces in our clients then we have to see the sagging the sagging is assessed in a number of areas like grow position the malar mount the mouth corners the jaw line i think we are running short of time so i'll be rather quick in my slides uh, dr sudhir how much time we have i think 15 20 minutes we have enough time ma'am you take your time no
everyone is listening okay. every, each and every participant is listening to you every okay 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 so there are various other factors like patient will not come and tell you that i look tired so you have to probe it out to the patient ma'am what are your expectations from the treatment so if the patient is not able to tell you so you can give a mirror in front of the patient or you can take a picture of the patient in the mobile and you can just assess that mobile uh, picture in front of the patient ki ma'am see uh, do you feel that you look tired has anybody told you that you are looking tired then the patient will say yes yes so many people are telling me that yes i didn't have my sleep but i am having enough sleep still i am looking tired so uh, the tired look is basically because the outer corners of the eyebrows have dropped or there is visible hollowness around the eyes or there are dark circles around the eyes that is the hyperpigmentation of the orbital area then a diagonal line or the band from the medial canthus of the eye to the center of the cheek which is known also known as the tear trap this tear trap is a uh, is a feature which will make you look tired and the depressed uh, or the lowered height appearance of the malar mound the malar mound which we have given uh, which we have talked uh, should be here it tends to come down and the loss of the ogee curve so these all features give to a tired look so all these features you have to tell during the consultation ma'am i am going to treat this so that you look more fresher you look less tired so even if the patient will not say you yes for that time that uh, consultation the patient will have this thing in his or her mind and go back and will look into the mirrors and will always come to you back for the next procedure of the facial aesthetics then the angry look can be due to the glabular lines you can ask the patient to frown there will be lot of lines here which will give an angry appearance to the patient and there is narrowing and pursing of the lips which will again give an angry look then the sad look is because of the marionette lines the lines which run from the corner of the mouth they become accentuated and they make you look more sad so if a patient is coming to you and during the consultation procedure you can tell to the patient ma'am do you think you your face looks sad then again the patient will tell you yes yes so many patients have told me i am looking sad so i want to wear make a happy appearance so you can just again accentuate and work upon the cheek augmentation area and you can accentuate the uh, happy appearance of the patients then coming to the most important question most of us are dentists here so uh, most of us uh, most of the people will ask me one question one common question most of you must be having in your minds that are the botox and the dermal fillers are these procedures not only of a dermat or a plastic surgeon so after having so much conversation with you today i think you are well versed that we have already studied the oral anatomy the oral physiology the musculature the blood supply in detail in our final year books in our first to final year books in as much detail so much detail that nobody else of the other profession must have read all uh, in such detail a dermat i have i have had all my training sitting with the dermats and with due respect to the dermats i am not getting into their field i am not here to discuss about the dermatic uh, dermat diseases i am not going to treat the urticaria i am not going to treat the psoriasis i am not going to treat any other hair or the skin or the nail diseases i am here just as a facial aesthetician to increase the aesthetics to enhance the aesthetics of my patients with few procedures for which i have just to work on the facial musculature the facial layers the periosteal layers i have just to treat those things i am not entering into the dermat field a uh, persons uh, of all other uh, doctors of all other specialties like the gynees the uh, ent people the ophthalmo people all are using botox and the fillers in their practices so why not a dentist we have more study we have no, more knowledge and more uh, study done into uh, all the upper third of the body upper third of the face and upper third of the whole of the face rather during our graduation so i think there is no legal issue doing these aesthetic procedures and lately uh, all the oral surgeons uh, have been given an uh, authentication by the dci that you can all perform these procedures and uh, coming back to a uh, few years back when implants were not a normal routine thing so people like us like when i started my dentistry that time implants were not into fashion we were not doing dent implants 
and that time we were telling the patient dent implants is not a good thing uh, you you should go for a bridge or you should go for an rpd because we didn't know about implants how to do implants we had no knowledge about implants so we were discussing all the negative effects of the implants and similarly when whitening thing they came into industry like the bleaching thing came into industry for the uh, dental thing uh, so many dentists so many other people were against this that this is not in your ethics this is not in your curriculum that you should go for the whitening of the uh, teeth but now since we have complete knowledge we know how safe it is we know how uh, beautifully we can do it so we have now accepted it and we are telling it to the patients also and similarly implants also every patient every doctor is uh, doing implants now and so say, similar is the case with the facial aesthetics by till the time you do not know the procedures till the time you do not know the complications till the time you do not know side effects and till the time you do not have complete knowledge about the facial aesthetics you will not be able to convince the patient about the facial aesthetics so today is the day to change to bring a facial aesthetics into your practices to add on these services into your practices so can so that you can enhance your facial aesthetics practices you can enhance your dentistry skills you can add much more things into your dental things so that you can have an edge above other clinics in your area so that you can give an edge above your other uh, other uh, competitors that you have an additional thing to offer to your clients so what about adverse reactions they can be slight adverse reactions but adverse reactions is with any other procedure like local anesthesia also unless and until we know the uh, we have completely studied the local anesthesia we cannot inject it we know what can be the vascular complications what can be the neural complications so if you have studied a subject in detail then you know how to manage the adverse reactions also so you can teach an old dog new tricks there is no age to learning i have seen lots and lots of dentists going a beautiful transformation after doing our courses they have upgraded their skills they have added to their uh, they have added so many feathers into their caps uh, for these procedures so these are the various training batches we have been training our student from the last around 8 to 9 years and we are training them into all the procedures like botanium procedures the facial uh, the facial fillers the microblading the ombre bros the powder bros even the hair transplants so we are into teaching of all the facial aesthetic procedures then again we have an international team with dr stefani uh, stefania vanara and dr antonio we have an international team where we uh, where we take an international batch of the students who are keen to learn the facial aesthetics we take them to italy once a year because of the covid um, the last two years we did not go otherwise we usually take a batch every year to italy where we have an international group where uh, pay, uh, where candidates where students from all over the world they club together and they have an international class uh, at the university of messina europe so we have uh, this facility also if you want to upgrade your skills to an international level and all our courses in india are also affiliated to the university of messina which is in uh, europe and this is uh, one of the books which i have authored the botulinum toxin a beautiful boon this uh, this this covers all the aspects about the botulinum toxin what is botulinum toxin uh, what is the mechanism of action which muscles have to be injected how much uh, e into each muscle has to, has to be injected what are the adverse effects what are the contraindications where it should be used where it should not be used so all this has been covered in this book then this is another book with the beauty and beyond which has been written uh, um, uh, thinking in mind the common public because the common public does not know what is botox what is filler what is prp so all those uh, all those uh, procedures have been explained in this book uh, keeping in mind the general public in uh, in our minds then there is another book that is the facial aesthetics in dentistry this has been authored keeping in mind the dentist how the facial aesthetic procedures can be incorporated into your dental practices so thank you for your kind attention uh, it was so wonderful having you all with me and this is just a, a brief explanation of what we teach in our uh, this thing uh, courses so um, we have a uh, seven days course in which we have part a part b and part c in part a we are treating all uh, we are doing all injectables where we give the training of the botulinum toxin the fillers the prp the various augmentation that is the cheek augmentation chin augmentation then the vampire facial the facial fillers the lip fillers 
thread lifting all this is done in part a that is the one part day one two and three of the course then we have part b in which we are covering the semi permanent makeup that is the eyebrow mapping the microblading the ombre brows the lip color the scalp pigmentation and part c is the different skin types we have i have a collaboration with dr debulina she is a dermatologist she covers these part c in which we are uh, having different skin types and this various skin formulation like which sunscreen is good for which skin which uh, which um, this thing uh, vitamin c is good for which skin then which hyaluronic acid to use for which skin and then we also have lasers the tattoo removal laser the photo facial the hydra facial the medi facials so all these treatments are there in the part c which is again a uh, two days uh, two days course among the seven days course so if anyone you are interested you can always contact me and thank you for your kind attention and please do let me know any questions last 10 minutes i have kept just for the questions please let me know uh, if you have any questions it was uh, a fantastic session ma'am uh, it is very easy so for, much. Uh, to understand if uh, one attends this session as uh, when i attended i came to know that uh, if i attend this i will come to know how uh, good this topic and if i want to take this into my practice how it can be done so let's have a question and answer there are so many questions time will be very less okay. we will try to finish it as much as possible so first question is from one dentist uh, can you ask your question please go ahead you yeah, yeah. unmute yourself and ask the question kids fun is the name can you please go ahead ask your question yes sir yes dr pooja how are you actually kids fun is the name yeah good to see you good to see yeah, you here dr pooja yeah. actually ma'am i just yes, want to pooja. ask how we have incorporated facial aesthetic in uh, dentistry now yes. uh, we are explaining everything to the Patient and definitely it will take time according to your area. They are yes. patients are not aware of this new concept. Yes. So yes. Yes. What are the marketing skills we can do to enhance this thing so that we can get much patient uh, in quicker uh, days? Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, first, tell me, Doctor Puja, how was your experience at our uh, institute uh, oh, after doing the course? Okay. it's great i'm really totally very happy and feeling so nice after uh, joining your course and become so confident about uh, all the topics you taught and really it, it was amazing session we had thank you thank you so much dr puja so your question yes. is very good so you do not have to run after the patient ma'am please get the botox done ma'am please get the facial fillers done so that is not the right technique to go because once okay. you run after the patient the patient will try to run away from you so what you okay. have to do you you do not have to hard sell you have to soft sell you have you can just during your routine procedures you can say you can tell to the patients ma'am um, uh, what if i do uh, the correction of this lines also so how do you feel if we just lift the faces like this are you liking it so we have those treatments also just that much we have those treatments also do not hard sell that this much is this much will cause this and this much will do not go into that do not go into that detail in the first consultation just give them a subtle subtle uh, this thing uh, uh, soft sell that we we have the treatments for this also then in today's era of digital thing you have to be present socially in all your social medias you have to tell to the world that yes you are doing this procedure just that to in a story form you have to sell organically you do not want the facebook thing to be there as a hard sell thing you have to tell your things in a story form like you have if you have told if you have done any facial aesthetic procedures like any any basic procedure like you have done if you have done any hydra facial say like to a patient and if the patient is feeling good you can always take a testimonial and post it on that uh, post it on this thing uh, facebook or anything instagram that yes this this patient had come to me for the facial rejuvenation she was very satisfied and she got a good glow after this or you can uh, you must have seen my facebook uh, i did this uh, uh, ear piercing for my daughter and i had posted it on the facebook and believe me there were so many queries for the ear piercing after putting a video of my daughter doing the doing the uh, ear piercing and which i had put on the facebook there were so many queries so that is yeah. a soft selling you do not have to hard sell 
so you have to put your things in a story form on the digital media on the social uh, social media so again that is that is a part but along with that you can do the hard sell on the google you can do it on the various promotional activities you can pay to the agency and do some uh, paid ads also that also works but along with the hard sell you have to give an emphasis on the soft selling goals plus you have to equip your uh, clinic with the uh, with various uh, this thing pamphlets or the banners with which the patient should ask themselves ma'am do you do this treatment also okay so you have to incorporate no. also all those things yes sir and you have also written a book also for the patient uh, knowledge and all the no? yes 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 that is what i was telling you the i just showed you the book also the cover page yes sir Yes. Anybody else? Any questions? Yeah. The next question is from Dr. Rangoli Gupta. She wants to ask you, ma'am. Uh, you already explained it, but can you please, uh, in short, you can explain how to use Botox for eyebrows and how to use Botox for gummy smiles? Both uh, were okay. in the uh, presentation, but can you please, uh, in short, you can explain? Okay. 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 Uh, for the gummy smile, we have to treat this area, which is around two centimeter from the end of the nose and three centimeter from the corner of the uh, lip. So this is a point which is also known as the Yonsei point. This is a point at which all your five major elevators of the face, that is the zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor, levator labii superioris, levator labii superioris, alic nasi. These are the four facial elevators which raise the lip. So these are the hyperactive muscles for which you have to give the botulinum toxin injection here. Around, you just have to inject three to four, two to four units at this area, just at a depth of two to four uh, millimeter. So you just have to inject here on both the sides and that will take care of the gummy smile. And regarding the eyebrow position, eyebrow lifting, there are actually two procedures. One is you just have to inject lateral to the mid pupillary line along the lower margin of the eyebrow you just have to inject two units at the tail of the eyebrow and just two units ahead of that staying natural to the mid, mid pupillary line so just giving four units here and four units here will will accentuate the eyebrows so that will uh, that will inhibit the action of the orbicularis ocular ocular that will not bring it down so that is one thing another thing is to uh, when you are doing the frontalis in the when you're treating the frontalis for the botox you do not have to go beyond the mid pupillary line in the upper third of the face when you will not go beyond the mid pupillary line the frontalis will keep doing its action and that will raise the eyebrows so there are two mechanisms of raising the eyebrows i think you have done in the course also um, so anytime you can take me um, take separate 15 minutes of me and i can teach you again because this time we have we are running short of time so just to give you a summary of this i've just told you so dr rangoli have you started doing any facial aesthetic procedure how was your experience at our course can you just throw a light on that just can you say a few lines about facial aesthetics dr rangoli can you unmute yourself hi ma'am hi dr rangoli how are you Yes, good to see you. Very good to see. Same, same here, ma'am. Ma'am, I really had very uh, good experience being in your institute, and uh, you know this has motivated me more doing uh, the procedures. But Thank right you. now I'm not doing yeah. it, and I'm in the process of uh, starting all these uh, uh, facial aesthetic procedures, all arranging this. all the things. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So yes, ma I, I definitely, I always look forward to attend uh, your uh, lectures, ma'am, because so that helps me. Uh, uh, it is a kind of a revision, and it is it will be ongoing all the time. And yes. you have helped me also otherwise, other than the uh, this sessions also. So uh, this Thank is, you, ma'am, so your voice was breaking. I just wanted to, yes, ma'am. I my I just want to know ki uh, this uh, the inner part of the uh, this eyebrow we have to inject yes. four units each side. Yes. Two yes. units so each that, side. Like I'll just, I'll just, yes. I'll just draw an eyebrow for you and let mm. you know. See, this is an yes. eyebrow I am drawing. Can you see the eyebrow? Yes, ma'am. Can you see mm. the eyebrow? So, yes. so this is, is the mid. This is the mid pupillary line. Pupillary yes. line. Yes. Yes. So you just have to inject near the tail. 
Okay. Just two units here and just two units here. Very superficially yes. because orbicularis okay. oculi, which is lying here, is very thin muscle. So you have to inject okay. into the orbicularis oculi that too very superficially. Yes, just two units, two units at two points. So is that clear? Okay. Yes, it is very much clear. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rangoli. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, any other question, please? Thank you. Good day. Uh, Ma'am, uh, happy dentist day. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Happy <laughs> National Dentist Day to everyone. Yes, 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 yes. Let's upgrade our Thank dentistry you. into facial aesthetics now. Yes. 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 <laughs> any other questions, please? Dr. Sudhir, do we have more questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Puja. Uh, Ma'am, you did the procedure of ear piercing on your daughter. So, yes. is there any complication or we can use just that machine and can pierce? See, most can of the we... times there are most of the time there are no complications because we have very less vasculature in this area. But the only uh, only thing you have to take care is keloid formation. In some patients who have a tendency of uh, getting keloids, they might get keloid due to this. And the blame can be on you that you did the air piercing and because of that, this has happened. Otherwise, there are no other major complications for that. But uh, in, child, in child, it's just a luck. If the patient doesn't have a keloid tendency, there will be nothing. But if the body itself has a keloidal tendency, then the keloid can form. So can so we do this in luck. your clinic? Yes, you can do in your clinic. It's a very safe procedure. All the jewelers are doing it. Why not you? Okay, so the uh, the name of that machine is? It's just a ear piercing gun. Okay. If you want, I and can help you in cost? getting that. How much it cost? It's around 5,000, Dr. Puja. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Yes, Dr. Sudhir, any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Hi, ma'am. Yeah, who's this there? Dr. Bhavna. Yes, Dr. Bhavna, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, ma'am. How are you? Yes, yes, I'm also good. Please tell me. Uh, ma'am, I have a doubt on uh, is, is there any contraindication for the procedures we do? There are a lot of contraindications for all these procedures. Uh, that is what we teach in our courses. The first contraindication is when the patient has too much expectations. So if a patient has too much expectations, please do not do any facial aesthetic procedure in such patients. Because let me know about the medical legal aspects of this treatment. Can you please uh, mute yourself? Can you please mute yourself? I'm an answering to Dr. Bhavna right now. Yes, Dr. Bhavna, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma you're audible okay. now. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, some patients have body dysmorphic syndrome in which they expect a lot that after getting a Botox injection, I'll be turned into beauty queen. So, those patients, yeah. they, you have to take care that such patients should not be treated by you because they will eat the head out of you. Everything. So, just take care that your patient doesn't have a lot of expectations. You have to give more and expectations should be very less. And okay, then... No. Uh, it, in, uh, in the botulinum procedures, you uh, in patients who have neuro, uh, neurological neuromuscular disorders, they should be avoided. And in persons who have keloid formation tendency, there also these procedures should be avoided. So during the course, you will be studying the contraindication for each procedure. They are different. Like I'm telling you for the Botox, they are different. For the fillers, the contraindications are different. So there are lots of topics. I cannot cover all those topics in this one-hour session. So for yeah, each yeah. procedure, there are separate contraindications. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Any other question, please? Ma'am, uh, ma I need to know uh, that the uh, removal of mole can be done by a spot pen because like how we had removed uh, tissue tags, but then yeah, yeah, mole yeah. also can be removed by spot pen? Moles. Moles can also be removed, but only thing you have to take care that they should not be hairy. In case the mole is hairy, the mole will always have a tendency to come back. So in those cases, okay. the surgical excision is always a better option. And cautery? 
Cautery again is doing the same thing as your mole pen. No, no, no. Cautery is same as your mole pen. Mole pen is a kind of cautery. Okay. So you have to surgically excise wherein the root of the mole has to be taken out because that hair will tend to grow back again and again. And that mole will also have a tendency to come back. So it's always better to go for the surgical excision. Okay, surgically while doing... Yeah. Okay, ma'am. If we are doing it surgically, the sutures what we place have to be absorbable or like... It's your wish. I usually give non-absorbable sutures. I give non-absorbable sutures. You can always call back the patient after the week and cut those sutures. Right? Okay, fine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Sudhir, do we have more questions? And there's a question by Dr. Rajesh Nagpal. What is the cost of the course? Uh, the cost of the course is um, uh, like 35,000 for each part, 35,000 part A, 35,000 part B, and 35,000 part C. And total is around 1.05. But people who are attending my webinar today, they can avail this course today. If they enroll today, they can get this at a cost of 80,000 only. And the March batch is already full. We do not have any slots for the March batch, uh, which is starting tomorrow. And this, uh, the next batch is from uh, this thing, 24th of April to 30th of April, for which few slots are still left. We have uh, completed 50% of the slots. 50% of the slots are still vacant. So if you want to enroll, you can enroll today at a special discount, which is 80,000 flat for all the uh, three courses, part A, part B, part C. Um, there's another question by Dr. Aisha. Do you provide yes. any post-course assistance? Uh, yes, doctor, we do provide our post-course assistance. My participants uh, who have already done from me have are already here. Dr. Pooja, do you get the post-course assistance after doing the course? Dr. Pooja, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Fully. <laughs> मतलब मैम को मैंने ट्रैवल करते करते फोन किया कि मैम मुझे ये आंसर मी राइट नाउ एंड एस सून शी सॉ माय मैसेज शी आंसर्ड मी बैक इतना अच्छा सिस्टेंस मिला है मैं आई एम रियली वेरी लकी दैट शी केम इनटू माय लाइफ and she and tomorrow is my patient also one more aesthetic patient for mole removal and uh, i'm going to proceed with that too and ma'am is always there to help this is my personal experience i'm really very happy we have a whatsapp group also uh, of all the alumni and we also have a facebook alumni group where you can all post your queries i am there to answer all the queries there plus all the alumni who have done from me they also keep their share they share their inputs into any query which has been put on the uh, facebook alumni group so you all uh, definitely have the post course assistance great to know that man there's another question by the username OPPO A53. Ma'am, yeah. please. Your voice is breaking. Dr. Amandi, your voice is breaking. About the medical legal aspects of this treatment. The question is, ma'am, please let me know about the medical. Okay, another very important question, the medical legal aspects of the facial aesthetics in India. See, the in India, um, recently the DCI has uh, permitted the uh, oral surgeons to perform all these procedures on your patients. And you know, when an oral surgeon is performing these procedures, when an oral surgeon can do extractions and impactions, even you can do extractions and impactions. When an oral surgeon can do implants, you also can do implants. When an endodontist can do root canals, even you can do root canals. So uh, if a DCI is uh, allowing uh, an oral surgeon to perform all these procedures, in the dental gazette also, it has been written, whatever an endodontist can do, whatever an oral surgeon can do, a general dentist can also do. And secondly, regarding the dermat, the opposition from the dermat and the other fields, uh, I think there should not be any legal issues because nowhere in the MD derma syllabus also it is written that the dermats can perform the uh, PRP or the uh, botulinum toxin or the facial fillers. Nowhere in the dermat uh, syllabus it is written. Even I had 
put an RTI to the MCI that are, are these procedures in the syllabus of the derma. So they had given me a reply to the RTI that you can go to the website. They had given me the website. You can go to the website, check in the syllabus of the MD dermatology. If these procedures are there, then it is their uh, domain. So all these procedures like Botox, fillers, PRP, they are not in their curriculum. Neither are they in our curriculum. So there is no one to decide who can do, who can not do. So uh, they also can do and we also can do. They are not there to tell you that you cannot do. I did my library, library dissertation in the topic Botox. So I have studied the Botox in detail. I have done, uh, the topic was Botox and orthodontics. And similarly, like me, there are so many other dentists who have given their dissertations, whose dissertations, whose theses have been published by the respective universities uh, for all these facial aesthetic procedures. And in India, there is no board for which you have to give exam. Like in outside India, there is board one, board two, you have to give exam and then you can be qualified for the facial aesthetic procedures. But in India, as such, there are no medical legal aspect. There is no, there is no this thing board which qualifies you to become a facial aesthetician. And also um, in India, uh, what I was going to tell you, uh, yeah, but you have to take care that you do not have to enter into the derma field. You are not there to treat the derma disease. You are not there to treat the hair or the skin diseases. That you have to take care. You do not have to enter into their domain with due respect to the dermas. So you have to choose your field carefully. That's it. I think that makes your question clear. I'm very much clear. Another question is similar to that. Maybe you answered in this only. Dr. Amandeep, I can't hear you. Dr. Amandeep, can you please uh, read it again? Your internet is not good. Yes. Or uh, there are so many questions, ma'am. Uh, we are okay. enough of time. And uh, should we go with more questions? There will be more questions. It is unlimited. Um, I think, first of all, we I should have we a picture of all the participants. All of all of yes, all yes. of them can just switch on their video for a minute yeah, and please, we can please, have a picture everyone. of all. Everyone can just unmute for a minute. Yeah, please. And uh, rather just show their pictures. That's so thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, lovely faces. Happy dentist day to everyone. Happy dentist day, ma'am. And you, everyone, uh, kind request to you. Happy to dentist put your day, names. Uh, in the next webinar, uh, we will be having it uh, very shortly. We will be having a webinar uh, with Dr. Midhu Miglani once again in few days later on. So if anyone miss anything in this webinar or late or anything happens, you can attend it one more time. We will invite Dr. Midhu if she's having time. And uh, if anyone sure. to attend the course, already it is informed, uh, you can contact us anytime or Dr. Midhu Miglani. Uh, so kindly let us know if you want to attend any other topic, if you want us to organize anything else, kindly let us know. So happy dentist day each and everyone and have a good Sunday. Take care. We can end this. Thank you everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you everyone. Thank you okay. everyone for taking your time on Sunday. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye.